Hi Anshu, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, pleasure to be here. Congratulations on scoring 99.92 percentile in CAT 2020. Thanks, thanks, thanks again. So, how do you feel about it? Uh, feels feels good, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, it is uh, it is a good score, and uh, yep, yeah, hoping to convert uh, this to final land and ABC call. Right. So, can you tell us a little bit about your preparation journey when you started your preparation and all? Right. Uh, so, for CAT 2020, I started sometime around uh, uh, July, and uh, you know the preparation journey is not very different from you know a lot of things that uh, other folks would say. So yeah, it was first firstly around you know figuring out uh, where exactly do you stand was not that uh, you know in a bad state, but uh, verbal required a lot of effort in my case, and so okay. did DLR. So I started off with a, in a position where uh, you know I was okayish with uh, quant, but had to work on DLR and VRC. So to that effect, uh, once figuring this out and then, hey, mocks, I mean, uh, can't stress it enough and everyone else says it so, but yeah, it is actually true. You know, you do have to give mocks and you have to give mocks till you're till you're tired of giving mocks. So majorly your preparation, I would say, even in my case, uh, 60 to 70% of that was, you know, giving mocks, understanding, right. you know, what exactly you're doing wrong. And if you needed special attention on something, then, you know, going back to that, and uh, working on those. So from August, uh, from July, I would say July, August, September, October, November, these four, five months, uh, I think I took up, uh, I took 20, 30, 30, almost 30 mocks, okay. right? And uh, spent a huge, huge amount of time in analyzing those mocks because, uh, you know, your preparation uh, till one, one point is getting a basic side, uh, which is true. But after that, it is fine tuning how you, you know, attempt these mocks. Yeah, I think mocks and mock analysis formed the basic crux of my preparation uh, you know anything apart from that we could discuss that as and when you know we talk about uh, the sections right. in particular so you're a working professional and you are particularly doing a very hectic job so can you tell us a little bit about that how did you manage your preparation how many hours a day you tried to put in right so yeah i since i am a 2018 graduate i've been working for two and a half years and I've okay. had stint across, you know, consulting, strategy, and currently product management. In my current role, especially, I am uh, um, I'm, since I'm a product manager now. There's a ton of responsibilities at my head, and that corroborates to extreme working hours. I mean, I sometimes work uh, 15 plus hours a day. So right. yes, it sort of got tough to manage time, but uh, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. So uh, I'd say uh, a couple of hours during the weekdays, uh, you know, uh, one, one and a half hours you have to take out uh, during the weekdays, uh, not necessarily for prep, but you know, to, I would say to keep yourself, to keep your brain in shape, right? right. Uh, it's not a lot. I, I usually used to do over the week, uh, weekdays was I used to analyze my mocks, right? I used to give v uh, mocks on weekends and I used to analyze them over the course of the week. And uh, I mean, I feel so that, you know, mock analysis, should be given uh, more importance than than people uh, do right i mean people do analyze mocks obviously but i don't think people spend the amount of time it deserves uh, so a mock which is like a three hour mock should be given at least six to seven hours i would i used to give eight to nine hours you know uh, to analyze a mock and you know when i say mock analysis it does not mean just those 34 32 34 questions right. it also meant you know when you realize that hey time speed distance is something that you know I shun away from or I make a lot of mistakes then going back and rectifying that mistake so this is what I did over the week over the weekdays and on weekends I used to give two mocks like religiously two mocks every week so uh, yeah sometimes near especially near the end of things I started giving more mocks even you know during the week but uh, when you're starting out I think uh, that is how you can manage your time if you do not have a lot of time at least try to brush upon things that you, you know fall behind it on. So in my case, uh, you know, since I, as I said, quant was not that big of a hurdle, but even within quant, there was a few topics. For example, time, speed, distance. Yes, it was. It is still my Achilles heel to 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 this day. So you know, I used to work on my time, speed, distance questions. Uh, I used to see that uh, different topics within a larger bucket of things. So uh, working on those and uh, that, that 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 majorly formed uh, the crux of my week. You know, uh, working on your mistakes and uh, improving on those. 
and weekends were solely dedicated to mocks right so how did cracku mock tests and sectionals help you during your preparation yeah cracku uh, cracku in fact helped me a lot uh, you know uh, as i said right it it is about to make keeping that balance right, uh, right. keeping your uh, brain active so cracku has these uh, daily daily test sort of a thing right if you go to uh, like and that in fact that is free for all so even when right. i was not a cracku student i think i think i joined cracku sometime uh, you know in september ish but even before that you know what attracted me to cracku was those daily tests and they have these curated uh, a uh, 15 minute test you know that that jolts up your brain and you know sets you up for the day so i used to give, give uh, i used to take this crack you daily test in all the three subjects uh, every day so that was one thing that uh, really helped me and i think uh, a couple of uh, i'd say you know concept builders i would say a lot of things that you know, i had a wrong understanding about especially in dilr uh, those sort of things were built up over time through these daily tests so that was one thing wherein crack you helped a lot uh secondly uh, there are there's this sectional test so i think i gave uh, varc sectional test and con so i think a uh, cracku's con test were a notch above uh, you know the general expected trend of quantitative uh, right. in general and that helped because you know uh, even let's say so cat 2020 did not really have a tough con but even when you when you giving mocks right even if there was a really difficult qa paper right uh, i was not faulted because i had prepared for that uh, through these sectionals so again being an engineer uh, you know you cannot mess up quant that would be a grave sin because you know your vrc and dlr is anyway not that great so yeah i think uh, you know setting up that uh, that that mental balance with tough qa uh, sectionals was was something that crack you sections helped me a lot with great so how did you stay motivated during this journey uh it was i okay i would uh, want to say this that again this is in fact really crucial you know uh when you start giving mocks you you see that again you start with very low scores of course obviously right everyone does and over time you slowly slowly increase but right. there there comes a phase where you sort of plateau out uh, your mock scores are not increasing heck they even stop they even start dipping in my case it started to dip uh you know what two months into preparation and uh, that is a challenging phase and it occurs for everyone and i can say this without doubt it happens even for your 100 percent dialers there comes the phase where you know your scores are not improving because uh, the proof that you have to a large extent you have done everything in that particular approach you either have to modify the way you approach the problem you know approach your preparation in general so when that comes and it, it feels really you know disheartening or disappointing Uh, but uh, you know i had the fortune of uh, a couple of friends of mine you know who were also preparing for cat and these guys are all like you know good in their all 99.5 plus of folks so you know it was like a symbiotic thing we used to keep each other in check you know uh, if i used to fold on something you know you know my friends used to help me out and you know likewise uh, we also had a couple of uh, you know groups from uh, pg pagal rai uh, right. so we had uh, like exceptional people right uh, everyone from that particular group which i'm talking about has scored uh, on at least a 90 run point eight so you know keeping uh, seeing those guys it, it it is a double edged sword right i mean you could have gotten disheartened that hey everyone is performing good and you aren't or you could have you know taken that as a motivating factor and you know push yourself and that is what i tried to do so these two were my support systems i would say great so can you tell us what was the most challenging section for you and what was your strategy in that section uh i would say both dilr and vrc were challenging for me okay. so to talk of vrc first uh you know with vrc i have had a hate and love relationship you know uh, i attempted all questions used to get 50% right 50% wrong and added up uh, at a, at an average score but uh, i realized that uh, this is what a lot of people try for they feel that hey vrc mein kuch nahi hona hai nahi aayenge number but that is a wrong notion uh, a good friend of mine uh, you know he took up a booster course in vrc at particular course what i understood was that you know even vrc to a large extent is logical and the purpose of vrc is there because you know when you're doing a mba there's a lot of you know stuff or material that you have to go through and figuring right. out the essence of those texts is what is why you have rcs in your you know cat paper as well so treating vrc like a logical problem right 
and then he started you know this guy that i'm talking about he started talking of uh, how when you know how vrc operates and started you know with a renewed faith approach vrc and uh, you know that sort of lucked out and vrc luckily went well i want to highlight here with respect to vrc and with respect to any section in general is that you know it is never sort of too late if you are not really doing good uh, in, in a section so vrc i was doing average uh, you know until i would say and we had cat in november so until october start my vrc was bad i i used to get something like you know uh, 90 85 to 90 you know okay. 91 92 on a good day that's sort of percent type but from there to i ended up with a 99.8 in vrc uh, this was predominantly because of the effort that i put in the last in the last one and a half months and uh, that that actually helped me uh, so the the driving point here is that you know it is actually never too late and one shouldn't really give up until it's its day uh, the other uh, problem was dilr and in fact i would say dilr is a problem to date i didn't really do a great in dilr in fact i just got a 93.xx percentile in dilr but uh, you know i tried i tried stuff for dila i you know did a lot of questions from over the net uh, you know over over mocks over sectionals but uh, you know i don't really have a strategy for dila but what i want to drive home the point is you don't really have to you know be a master of all three sections so even with a 93 percentile in dila i i ended up with a good enough score in you know good enough overall score so you know you have to realize it, it's very pertinent that you realize where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are and you have to always capitalize on your strengths cat is an again cat is an exam for you know seeds to one of the best management institutes in the country and it is uh, it is precisely about this word management that you have to understand right uh, not not so good dilr but you know banking heavily on qa and you know working on my vrc where i could see a growth you know a path where i was improving upon uh so that helped me and i i think i realized this uh, somewhere mid october that dilr is not going to be that great but i'll have to capitalize on qa and vrc not that uh, one should give up on the subject entirely mm-hmm. but that you know your it's it's about roi you put in efforts where it counts so this is what uh, i think my dilr uh, could be a helpful point for folk other folks as well right so can you tell us about the strategy you followed in each section uh right so way because that was that that subject uh, i like so with qa uh, you know being i would say an engineer or you know having uh, with with qa having uh, questions from you know 12th class level or you know even before i would say 10th to 12th level uh, basics and fundamentals to a large extent were sorted except for you know a couple of topics as i said time speed distance so uh, i didn't really focus on those topics what i did and what i think anybody should do is uh, even before you start preparation take a mock i mean you should take a mock you take a mock and you see where you stand and that right. is when you you realize so when i took my first mock i still had a 99 plus sort of a score in qa which kind of was like okay so i don't need a lot of effort in qa but i could see that hey there are there are certain questions either topic or type of questions for example theta questions i used to get wrong initially right so uh, that that was uh, that is what i figured out in qa and uh, qa i have iteratively you know worked uh, through mocks so you know giving mocks figuring out questions pulling those questions together understanding which topics are weak topics as a tsd then asking of for friends you know what is the best source uh especially for uh, time and speed distance so it was uh, it was about you know uh, clinical precision of putting in time and effort because as i said you know i did not have a lot of time because of you know he- a hectic work and all so uh, even during the week when i wanted to do qa i wanted to do only those topics which i was not really great with so i i got a couple of sources and i practiced from those black box also you know they had a section on tsd uh right. separate section on tsd so even that that helped so i think qa was more or less sorted but when it comes to vrc and dilr so vrc uh, i spoke to uh, a few people who had you know risen in vrc so with vrc it so happens that you know there are people who are naturally good at vrc similar to people, you know there are folks who are actually good at qa so i spoke to these people who were not naturally good at vrc but did did great in vrc in their respective cats right and uh, 
you know, I tried to figure, I tried to emulate what they did. A uh, couple of things worked, a couple of things didn't. For example, reading newspapers, again, it's a very cliche thing, but it works. Uh, you know, it's not about newspaper, but it is about reading something. You should either read newspapers or you could be reading Aeon articles or Psyche articles. But reading helps, it builds up your flow. And uh, with VRC, this is something that you'll have to do from from the get-go because you know you can pull pull up your accuracy so as when i said you know that uh, i pulled up my vrs in the last uh, one one and a half month i pulled up my accuracy you cannot really pull up your attempts if you are a slow reader because you cannot become a fast reader overnight so right. i had attempts, but i messed up on accuracy which i improved so people who do not have that sort of a speed in reading they need to get to that stage and you do not really have to be you know somebody an exceptional reader I think 240 words per minute is a very decent, uh, you know, reading speed to to do uh, BA or to do RCs. So that I developed through reading newspapers and Aon articles. Uh, it also introduced me uh, to various topics. So once I understood, once I had the flow of reading, and once I had the feel for understanding what a passage is about, I also focused. So the second part, once you know, I spent one month in in doing this, you know, getting uh, getting into that field, getting into being comfortable with reading. So the next thing what I did was I started to read to understand. And when I say I read to understand, I mean you know when you read a passage, uh, and when you're reading the next next paragraph, so how this paragraph links back to the first, right? Uh, right. Where, is, where is the logical connect from the first paragraph to the second paragraph, so on and so forth, so that you can get an overall gist out of things. So this is what I start started trying to do, but uh, it showed gains. But I could not, you know, really do it for a prolonged period because uh, the things happened. Uh, there was work and all. But uh, this is uh, an important thing to do because even my VRC mentor, you know, uh, with whom I joined in October, Octoberish, even he told me the same thing. And uh, at that point, we went to a lot more depth. But this is true that you know you have to start getting to link, you know, paragraphs, link sentences. See how heavy a sentence is. When I say, you know, if if it is using extremes like only, uh, you know, things like, is there a causation from one sentence to another? This happened because this happened. So there was a causation. So figuring out these things, it's pretty logical. So the the one takeaway for VRC is you have to understand. You don't really have to be, you know, uh, a very good, uh, I would say, person who can who can talk in English or who can read very fast. But you have to be pretty right. logical. DRC is as logical as DIN. So once I started to get that, it was about you know figuring out how what do questions mean, and I went about that by trying to understand what is the intent of the question setter for the particular question. So you will realize that you will see a lot of options are factually correct. They are correct with respect to the paragraph, but are they answering the question asked? I mean, it is it sky is blue is a correct statement, but Is the question about what is the color of the sky, or you know, I mean, is your option answering the question? Once I understood this, a lot of uh, things became a lot easier because you know people usually they eliminate options and they they come down to two options. Right. And I mark the right answer, which is something that I did too. But uh, once I started to think it from this angle that look right, but which of these answers the question that is asked? And this uh, seems like you know it is an obvious thing, but uh, more often than not, you know, in the exam setting, we tend to ignore this fact. So I started reading questions twice and thinking like, if it is a why, so the answer should be something that answers the why, right, and not a what. So I mean things like that, figuring right. out what the question is asking you. So doing that, uh, you know, and figuring out as I said extremities, uh, helped me through RCs. VA, I would say, is. Pure hard work. You'll have to work in VA if you're not good at it naturally. I wasn't, and what I did is I took a previous year uh, CAT papers and mock papers, and I w- went through some I don't know two hundred, three hundred questions in VA. In fact, I think more. I think I'm selling myself short. I think I went three hundred, four hundred questions in VA, uh, all types, para jumbles, odd one outs, and you figure out you know there are. Only a finite number of strategies involved when when you know formulating a question around uh, let's say para jumbles, right? Right. So, uh, doing that helps. So I would say VA is brute brute effort. VA is brute effort. RC is pure understanding. That solves for VA RC. For QA, I've already answered. For DILR, I am not really the best person to answer DILR. But uh, DILR, uh, 
what I figured out was one thing that I think other folks should also figure out is, uh, you know, what sort of a DIY person you are. Are you somebody who can easily answer the easy questions, and you know, you choke when it comes to you know the difficult steps, or is or is your issue an issue about speed? Because if it is latter, it can be worked upon, and if it is former, it can also be worked upon. But that will have to be looked at from a different you know different lens. Somebody who used to choke when it comes to difficult question in the exam setting, and you know was able to do those after after the mock or after the exam, and uh, to a large extent my efforts were geared towards this. You know, uh, trying to solve questions. Again, this is also to a large extent brute effort. But uh, I found out certain niches. I found out certain niche wherein I was uh, good at. For example, uh, you know puzzle sort of questions which are you know, mixed DI and mixed LR. I was to some extent good at those, right? And you figure out certain questions that you are good at. What it basically helps you with this, it helps you with uh, a booster in confidence, which I would say is an important thing when it comes to DILR. And it it happened with uh, the CAT twenty twenty slot three DILR. So I was slot three, and like everyone knows, slot three DILR was right. way too right. But uh, and I started with the first set. I I saw that, and I think there were six sets, right? I saw the first set, and I was like, hey, I cannot do this. Second set, I cannot do this. Third set, I cannot do this. Fourth set, I cannot do this. And you know, in that situation, anybody would have you know sort of given up mentally. Uh, but when I saw the fifth set, I was like, okay, okay, this is something that I think I can do. It's it might be a little, uh, uh, I would say moderately tough, but I can do this. But I still did not go ahead with it. I went to the sixth set, and that was like it was like a piece of cake. I did the sixth set in under five minutes, five six minutes. Went to the fifth set, uh, did did that. Then I had almost thirty minutes, not thirty. I think twenty five minutes in in the forty hour format, forty minute format. Twenty five minutes for, and in those twenty twenty five minutes, I did one set. I spent okay. those twenty five minutes and I did one set because I realized that this is this would be you know a tough paper, and uh, if, even in that one set, I got only half of those correct. So okay. uh, to a large extent, I would say DLR is about figuring out uh, you know be comfortable with. And trying to uh, work upon tougher questions in different years. Years. Great. So, can you tell us what was the one most important thing that actually helped you improve your scores in any section? Improve score. So, I would I would I would want to answer this in two parts. Okay. One is improve. When it comes to improving scores, uh, I think my major score improvement was in BRC. And uh, as I said. For for BARC, I feel is it as a, as a re, I'll reiterate what I said that it is actually not too late. So uh, you know I approached BARC from a fresh angle. Uh, uh, you know as late in 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 October, I I revamped my BARC strategy. You know when this friend of mine helped me with, I revamped my BARC strategy and started to look look at things more clinically. You know okay. with more precision as to what you know, what the logic behind the as I said the question or the paragraph is. I think that helped me in improving my VARC score. QA was to a large extent; it was similar. DILR was something you know left to the gods. Brilliant. So finally, what are some tips that you want to give to the future CAT aspirants? Right. Uh, I have. I think I have only two major tips. One is, uh, and and believe me when I say this, I I can say this with ten percent surety that you know. CAT is not really a tough exam. You should not really be, you know, giving or like pinning all your hopes and everything on CAT. Uh, there are a lot of other exams. Then you know, there's that. There's IMT. There's SNAP and MAT. There's a lot of other exams. Uh, what this basically helps you with is, you know, that this is an exam. Probably you've been preparing for six, seven months, and then you go on to D Day, and you have, you know, that baggage of pressure, uh, and I know people who could have been potential ninety nine for life plus. folks but they did not even manage in 99 just because of this thing that you know they give too much importance to cat and they sort of uh, you know messed it up on d day uh, you know speaking of of my own experience i would say you know i knew my dlr was not great okay and so i was you know i was given slot 3 dlr and as i said you know i was seeing set 1 2 3 4 and i knew i cannot do any of those and at that point i had i you know panicked Uh, I would have messed up. I wouldn't have you know got a ninety nine, but uh, this is this is precisely what I think differentiates uh, somebody who gets a good score and somebody who could have gotten a good score but did not. And I think IMs, uh, you know, since they're training you to be managers, future leaders, 
this pressure handling is one thing that they are testing you as well so to that effect i would say that you know cat is not really an exam about three sections cat has actually four sections apart from the three usual ones i would say temperament is an important section as well you know keeping a cool head you know being there understanding that you know, hey you're prepared and if it is tough for you it might be tough for a lot of other folks and even if it is not you know you can only do, you only have to do what you know what you can do so seeing those four sets not being able to do anything uh, it's a 40 minute uh, section almost 10 minutes are already gone uh, you don't really know what to do but you see the last two sections last two sets and you see that hey those are easy and you try to do those as soon as possible and i did that and i still you know uh, having wasted i would say 10 15 minutes and you know spending almost 20 25 minutes for one set and not even getting all of those correct i still managed a 93 percentile which is not great but uh, i am satisfied given uh, you know given the sort of uh, environment i was in you know with that uh, pressure but handling it well so i think right. handling pressure well is the most important thing about tracking cat you know you can very easily prepare for qa you can very easily prepare for dilr and vrc but this is something that you have to start inculcating from day zero itself great so thank you so much anshu thank you so much for joining us today and thanks for your time thanks thanks a lot thank you